Thank you. Thank you, Monica, for inviting me to be here today. Okay. Uh, the title of my talk is called Reading Tea Leaves. Science fiction author William Gibson his infamous quote, the future is already here, it is just evenly distributed, is how most designers conceptualize the future where design is the manifestation of potential futures, which are embodied, located, and projected into the present. Design is nascent, latent, waiting to reproduce themselves into future worlds and environments. Modernism's, sorry, modernism produced ubiquitous corporate identity, Homo postmodernism produced a future of sprawling classicism that is both fat and thin in the shopping mall, aesthetic, and a discourse on images on the scenographic. These futures are now our past, and it's unclear at this moment what the future will entail. Ultimately, I think Monica's provocation to all of us is exciting and troubling in that it's more revealing of a present listlessness in the discipline and academy. Also inherently, it assumes that the academy is the place where the avant-garde is located in determining the future of architecture, which I believe is true. Personally, I think the future of architecture will be rethinking representation, new narratives of architecture, and new relationships between the production and reception or analysis. We need to find new ways of engaging the world, both through buildings, but also through representation. I don't believe formal narratives are enough, form versus shape, et cetera. For me, these have become semantic partisan device differences and solipsistic. The problem with reading the momentary tea leaves is that there's ver very little cohesive movements anymore. The future generally requires a group effort in order to will it into being at a large scale. Architecture is at a moment where it is no longer monolithic, but being developed into parallel genres. The current architectural crisis is really in imagining the future, which is why we have John McMurrow working on the apocalypse. Nobody wants to play the same old games in the same manner. If anything, the future of architecture should be a radical new conception of the discipline, new methods of disciplinary evaluation and analysis. Otherwise, it will be a further fragmenting of architecture into species and genres, into multiple parallel futures. Today, there are new combinations of histories and disciplines accessible to students and architects which weren't available to prior generations. Architects can work as they have as generalists and alchemists, but with more ingredients and information. For us personally, uh, with my office Moss, the near future is about looking at new modes of representation in architecture. So we're very interested in time-based media narrative, video, and real-time responsive simulation software, and the role it has in architecture, both as producing methods of production, but also reception and constituencies. This is similar to the extension of the avant-garde painting practices into video art. Our projects look at previous avant-garde and rework them through time-based media. We've maintained a continuing interest in recouping an avant-garde, architectural avant-garde, our practice plays within multiple current discourses simultaneously. We are constantly in search of new methodologies that can collapse the real and the representational. So for example, we produce software that has real-time physics and real-time structural form finding. And we produce movies of real projects and objects with overlapping fictional narratives that conflate the art life regimes of formalists and functionalists into an uncomfortable and awkward alchemic mixture. The goal of this work is perhaps to rethink and revive the avant-garde practice in architecture and to do so while not giving up on the real practice of architecture. Um, some projects that will hopefully built, be built in the near future. Uh, this is an example uh, of some of the software we've been writing in our office and working on. Um, we have a very small practice of six people uh, and part of that uh, includes uh, a programmer uh, as one of our um, main sort of collaborators in our office, um, as well as we work with uh, engineers from uh, Bureau Happel to SCGH and, um, uh, and, and others, the measure. Uh, so this is uh, called MossStack. Um, we're developing software to explore ways of stacking bricks that take uh, self-weight and sustainability into account. Um, and as a result, these, uh, this works as a kind of system of branching brick structures. Um, we're collaborating with an artist, um, I think 
can play the video. Uh, an artist, uh, Tobias Putri, on several projects, and this software was written to help uh, with that with that work. <laughs> just in case the movie actually didn't work. <laughs> um, this is uh, the fir one of the first projects uh, we built at the Baltic Gallery uh, called Overhang, um, stacking of um, large-scale uh, foam blocks. Uh, this is a project that is uh, right now starting construction at MIT List Gallery, uh, and it's in a way a, a kind of extension of the software from moss stack to moss erosion, where we start with a kind of very large-scale cube uh, and erode it brick by brick um, until it creates um, a kind of internal um, and interior structure. This is a plan drawing um, and a kind of exploded axon uh, worm's eye view. Um, the next project uh, which we're working on right now, so these are some early sketches, but is uh, also an extension of the same uh, kind of research um, and collaboration also with uh, Tobias uh, is a community center um, dance performance hall uh, in lo to be located in Uganda that we're hoping to start construction on um, in uh, very soon, in the next couple of months. Uh, and so it's, a, again, a kind of experiment with the sort of stacking brick and creating um, new form uh, molds uh, to form the actual uh, brick, large-scale brick um, on site. So this is a worm's eye view. Um, and a plan on the right side is a, more of the community hall space. On the left side is to be a sort of dance and film um, uh, uh, sort of space. The, um, the local town already has a dance troupe, which we thought was pretty fantastic to learn about. Um, they just have no place to actually come together. So that's what we're working on. Um, the next project is also, uh, we are one of the 100 uh, houses in Inner Mongolia. Um, so part of this project is to look at the idea of um, combining the Chinese courtyard typology um, as well as looking at other sort of traditional courtyard type houses um, and, and combining that in combination with sort of uh, parametric solar chimneys allowing for passive cooling in the summer and passive heating in the winter. So I'm going to show two short uh, films. One is um, a kind of early study of the sort of form finding. So, yeah. This Ordo sketch. a film we made um, after working on the project. Uh, we have a kind of process of working between models and filmmaking, but uh, part of the, let's say, problem with the Ordos project is that there's actually no client. Uh, we, you don't actually know who's going to live in your house, so we invented um, a, a kind of uh, 
family, fictitious sort of family, uh, to live there. show one last one last thing I can get it to go ah, I think so 
Okay. And and just the last project uh, is a, a drive-in um, uh, and performance center uh, in Marfa, Texas, uh, where we design both the screen and the park. And I'm at 15 minutes, so uh, we also made a film. And then uh, our last film we did recently called Escape. It's about a future um, anthropology, archaeology uh, of after party. Thank you.